Welcome to Aspired Elements Ayurveda Talk. Tonight, we are going to address how Ayurveda deals with shingles. Many of you may know that shingles is part of the herpes virus. So in Ayurveda, you are treating shingles just like how you would treat herpes. That includes the oral as well as the sexually transmitted uh, herpes. But herpes is something that is in the cells. It's a virus and it is dormant. And then usually the biggest contributor to why there is an outbreak is stress. So I will be actually doing a separate video on stress because stress is a big topic. Stress is psychosomatic. And that means that it's a lot of, it's mental. It's a lot of mental anguish over whatever it is that's going on in your life that will cause the body to activate and activate those nerves that cause an outbreak of herpes. So we're addressing shingles. And a lot of times people think that shingles is something that only happens to older people. But I will tell you, shingles actually can happen to you at any age. I My brother had it when he was in his 30s. My sister had, one of my sisters had it in her 20s. I've had it several times. And all of those outbreaks happened after extreme stress. So one of my sisters got it when she was in college. So she was in her early 20s when she got shingles. So shingles can happen at any time. And it is activated by stress. So if you're all of a sudden realizing, oh my gosh, my body is reacting, you have to deal with what's going on in your life and the amount of stress. And we'll talk about that a little bit. But so with herpes, um, there are the, the remedy that I like to use that is, and it tastes actually not bad at all, if you have shingles, obviously the one of the number one things that you're going to need to do is catch it right away and you want to eliminate your stress as much as you can. You've got to make sure you're getting enough rest and then you're also creating routine. When you create a routine for your body, it is easier for your body to manage if you keep changing things in your life, eating at different times, going to bed at different times, waking up at different times, that's stressful for the body. It never knows what to expect. When am I going to eat next? What are we doing? Are we going to actually go to sleep at, at the same time? So you want to make it as easy as possible for your body. Your body becomes much more efficient when it knows what to expect. So there's that. The other thing too is as far as remedies, the remedy that I like to use, just a basic tea, is equal parts of chamomile, bromine, and jadamamsi. And jadamamsi is one of my favorite herbs, that and bromine. All of those are going to help cool down and calm down, okay? So they are more cooling herbs, and they are calming herbs. They also very much affect the mental, the mind being able to calm down. So if you've never had shirodara, which is the oil that goes on the forehead, that is a treatment that can also reduce stress, mental stress. It's great for people who are vata and pitta. Vata, remember, is ether air elements, and pitta is fire element. Those elements get activated very quickly and can go out of balance very quickly due to stress and things like that. So, um, so that is a really great herbal remedy and you just boil it. You just take equal parts, like a half a teaspoon, put it in a mug and then add some hot water and then drink it. And it does not taste bad at all. If you like chamomile tea, you're going to probably like this because that's what you're going to taste the most. Um, also meditation is a really great way to start helping to calm down the nervous system so that the shingles settle down. So meditation is a way to soothe and reduce stress. You wanna start your meditation first thing in the morning. If you do not have a meditation practice, then you can listen to a guided meditation. Start out with just a few minutes, five to 10 minutes. 
and then gradually build. I also would recommend that you incorporate yoga nidra, N-I-D-R-A. Nidra means sleep, but it is you're not actually falling asleep, but if you do, it's totally fine. But yoga nidra, like I said in my last video, is also called non-sleep deep rest. You can do it at night. You could do it during the day. Whenever you're feeling stress, lay down, do some yoga nidra. 15 minutes, 20 minutes. If you have a little more time, do it longer. And what that does is it activates deep relaxation in the body. So it's a specific te technique that will trigger deep relaxation. And if you do it, that practice will very much help the body and the mind calm down. The body and follows the mind. Okay. Um, so neutralize your stress. You absolutely have to address your stress. And one of the things that I will tell you is you got to look at what you have control over. You have to look at what you have control over. If, if there's something you don't have control over, then you have to let it go. And how do we let things go? Well, we accept it. I don't have control over that. That is out of my hands. And so I'm going to accept that I can't do anything about it. And I'm going to surrender it. And then that surrendering brings a certain amount of peace because you're bringing consciousness into, oh, I'm worrying about this, or I'm upset about this, or it's making me angry. It's agitating me because you bring that in and you make the conscious effort to say, there's nothing I could do about this. So I'm going to accept it and surrender it and release it. Okay. So that is a way to manage that. The other thing you look at is what do you have control over? And you literally write down a list. This is what I have control over. I have control over my schedule. I have control over my thoughts. Yes, we do. I have control over what comes out of my mouth. And your words have power, by the way. So if you start listening to how you talk, it's important. Because if your language is always, I can't stand it. It's it's going to... It's going to kill me if I do this. That kind of language is heightening the stress in your body. So remember your words have power. Everything is vibration. Everything. Everything boils down to frequency. Your words have power because there's vibration there in the words. So remember that. Remember that your words matter. What you say matters. What you choose to look at matters. What you are allowing as far as input in. So if you spend a lot of time on devices, over activating the eyes, the eyes, by the way, when they get, when the muscles around the eyes get stressed, get tense, because you're looking at something for too long or um, it's starting to agitate you and your eyes get fixed. It tenses these muscles, which then tenses all the way into the back of the brain, which then activates the central nervous system. And then your whole body goes into stress. We have to make sure we are paying attention to what we are taking in, into our ears. What are we listening to? Into our eyes. What are we looking at? And noticing how is it impacting our body? How is it impacting our mind? And if it's impacting you in a negative way, like watching the news, stop it. Just stop it. It's not supporting you. Everything is energy. Uh, I will tell you, a lot of people say this to me because I do not watch the news anymore. I stopped. It was just making me agitated. It was making me fearful. I stopped watching the news. And people will say, oh, well, you're not staying informed. But you know, you are actually collectively contributing in a much better way by staying in a positive place. And I don't like to really use that word, but keeping yourself more light and not tense. If you're tense all the time, you are then collectively contributing to the fear, the anxiety, the agitation. And that's how we all then move around the world towards each other and that's not good so we have to look at how are we showing up what are we allowing in what are we allowing out okay
Okay, that also includes what you allow in as far as your food. So what you eat matters. If you are eating foods that are going to aggravate your nervous system, you got to stop. So no raw foods, no junk foods, no foods that come out of plastic packages. Try to get plastic out of your diet and make sure you get plenty of rest and anything that you can do to support that body. When your body is getting shingles, you are stressed. You got to back off whatever it is you're doing. If you're able to remove yourself out of that stressful situation, go get a massage, massage your own body. So doing a massage treatment on yourself, it's called a daily abhyanga. Do that every day and you could do it at night where you literally just give nurturing to your own body. And then you could take a nice warm bath at night with essential oils or even a warm, a hot shower and then get to bed early. Turn off all your devices. Don't look at anything. No TV at night. And also don't listen to anything. Go into silence and let that body calm down. All right. So those are just some ways of how Ayurveda manages shingles. They are going to look at it as a herpes virus because that is what it is. But you can get it at any age and it is triggered by stress. Eliminate the stress. Get everything calmed down. Get that Ayurvedic tea. And if you want more support, there are some body treatments that are very supportive. You could do those as well. Get the body calmed down. Get a massage. Come in and get the Ayurvedic bliss treatment. It's fantastic. The Shiradhara calms the mind. All right. Reach out to me. I would love to support you. Ayurveda is what I'm trying to give to you guys as far as whatever it is that's going on. There are ways of managing it with it with Ayurveda. Okay. So aspiredelements at gmail.com. Thank you guys.